Welcome to Connect Canyons, a podcast sponsored by Canyon School District. This is a show about what we teach, how we teach, and why. We get up close and personal with some of the people who make our schools great. Students, teachers, principals, parents, and more. We meet national experts too. Learning is about making connections. So connect with us. Today, we're connecting with our amazing principal, Stacy Kersall. She's a principal over at Eastmont Middle and her son, Tyler Kersall. Now, Tyler, you're an American Ninja Warrior. Yep. How did you get into being part of that? What made you interested in becoming an American Ninja Warrior? So I was eight years old and we were just scrolling through what was recorded on our TV and I saw American Ninja Warrior. I had no idea what it was. It was just curious to turn it on. And we flicked it on and I see this guy running through like this eight to nine obstacle long course and just tearing it up. It looked like a giant playground at the time. So like as a kid, I was really interested. And then from there, I just kind of found stuff in the backyard to play on. I would like we had this dog kennel. I would throw big moves and stuff on. And then eventually my dad built me a few obstacles and We found competitions. I was selected for American Ninja Warrior Junior about five years ago. And after that, I was introduced to this whole world of different competitions, different people, and it just turned into this community that I love, and eventually I got to be on the big show. So, yeah. So it started out with just playing in the background, but I'm I'm assuming it takes tons of training to become the elite athlete that you've become. How many hours do you put into this? Um, currently I'm training five to six days a week. It's a mixture of hands-on training with obstacle equipment as well as putting in time in the weight room just to train all the muscles to do what they need to do. Um, so far, since I started that training regimen, I feel a lot stronger and I think I could do a lot of incredible things with it. So, And you also work at a, a gym that's uh, kind of a ninja yeah. warrior playground? Yeah, it's called um, Impact Ninja Gym. It's actually about five minutes from here. Um, It's pretty much a building filled with a bunch of obstacles, both kid-sized and adult-sized. It's a lot of fun. Families bring their kids. They can burn a bunch of energy out. and We do birthday parties. Um, Even we get get a few adults that come in here and there, and they they all just love it. It's such a good good job, good workspace, and just an all-around good time. So I've been a little bit of a Facebook stalker of yours, Stacy. So I've seen <laughs> that there's been a lot of travel and a lot of, like, family effort that has gone into supporting Tyler's dreams. Because this, I'm assuming this is your dream to continue. Absolutely. So this is a lot of support. How have you been able to support your son? And how did it go from just playing in the background to, okay, we've got to support him. This is something that's important to him. Yeah, well, we did. We we gave up our family trips to to do ninja trips, but we <laughs> turned them into family trips as we go. Um, but we really saw that he was an elite professional at this, and when he was making progress and and able to make top ten in world competitions and things like that, we knew that it was not something that we was just a hobby. That it really was something that he would do, and we figured, you know, if he was playing. A typical sport, if he was playing baseball, if he was playing football, those types of things, we put that same amount of money into it. It's just different because there's not the availability of the competitions locally. So there are few gyms on the West Coast. The majority of the gyms and and competitions take place on the East Coast. So there is a lot of travel involved, which is fun because we get to see different parts of the world. Um, but it it definitely is more popular out on the East Coast, so we have to go out there more often. My question for you, Stacey, as a principal and as a mother, when you see that potential within a student or your child, how do you help that grow without being overbearing? Because there's helping a child with a goal. There's You can cross over into being the stage moms that we've all seen on, like dance moms, or... You can be the kind of parent that really is an advisor that helps them grow. How do you advise parents to take the route that you have? Because you've done a really great job of helping but not pushing too hard. Well, thank you, first of all. But um, initially, I think when we were going, um, I, I 
I was out in the middle of everything. I videoed everything. I wanted to be involved. I would go through things. I would try to coach him. I can't do any of this stuff. I don't know what I'm talking about. So I would watch back those videos, and all I could hear was myself. And I'm like, okay, if I'm going to video, first of all, I need to shut my mouth because nobody who I'm giving that video wants to hear me. <laughs> so that was the first thing. Um, but then as I watched the way that they progress with each other as far as athletes go, it's a different sport than anything else. So they actually work together. They're not out to, to beat each other, so to speak. They're out to beat the course. So they process with one another, and they can get way more from that than me trying to think that I know everything, which I think is kind of a general rule for when you do any sport. I see a lot of parents, like when we were involved, he was involved in baseball pretty heavy before that. You know, parents on the sidelines are constantly yelling what you're supposed to do and trying to make that right. But really, that's not going to change what they're doing at that moment because their head's already set with what they're doing. But as far as momming him, you know, to be the successful student that he is on top of that and try to make that balance, um, I've had to make some really hard decisions as a mom. And if he's not pulling his own, I've pulled competitions from him. He had a really, really significant competition that he was supposed to go to Florida for, and he didn't do his stuff. And this is even at a college level now. I'm still checking his grades. If I'm funding something, then it's on me to make sure that he's pulling his end of something and it's probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do as a mom um, to watch the disappointment that he had in not doing that. But he won't make the mistake again. And the biggest thing that we've both learned from the sport of ninja is failure is an option. And failure pushes you to do better the next time. So whether it's failure on something that was happening at school or failure on something that's happening on the course, it makes him stronger and it makes him better. What's the biggest thing that you've learned from those moments, those failure moments? Because I'm sure that, yeah, when you've succeeded, you've learned things from that. But I've always found in life that the areas where I've learned the most are the areas where I failed because those are actually the ones that I've gained, like the things that I can change to make things better. So what have you learned from failure? Um, I'd say it's just taught me to persevere more than anything. Um, the biggest thing with failure, like, I mean, there's a quote from Sylvester Stallone that's like, it's not about how many times you get knocked down. It's about how many times you can get hit and keep moving forward. So basically the biggest thing it's taught me is to just whatever knocks me down, just get back up. You're not done. There's more things to do. You can recover. And failure is just mostly a motivator at this point. Every time I mess up in school or if I fail on Ninja Warrior, like last year on Ninja Warrior, I failed really early, and I was devastated, just distraught for a good month or two, but once I wrapped my head around it, the off-season of the show turned into the best comp season I've ever had in my life, so just using failure as a motivator has kind of always been the go-to, and it's worked out pretty well, so... As a mom, when you see your son have a, a month of devastation after a competition like that, how did you help him cope with things? Um, he's gotten to the point where he's pretty good about working through it. He'll push him, he'll over push himself at that point. So I think that's what I've had to do as a mom is say, hey, you're not giving yourself rest time. You're not, you know, making sure that I can make sure he's taking care of his body because if he's not it won't hold up in this sport. Like, there's a lot of joint issues and things that people have in this sport. Yeah. But I think that watching his drive after those moments, and one of the things that I think is really cool that he does is with his, his social media posts and things, he films his failures. He doesn't just post when he does things well. He posts when how many times it took him to get to that point because he is – you know, somebody who the younger generation of ninjas look up to. And so as they watch, they need to learn how to fail too. And he coaches some of those, and there's a pretty good kid at his gym that yeah. that works really hard, but he gets devastated when he doesn't do well. And so for Tyler to model that, that you have to fail to get better, it's helped that younger group be able to realize that they have to fail too. It's got to be a pretty heavy meant to realize that, with your social media and 
how many kids that you reach that people are really are watching what you're doing. How do you approach that? The model I go off of is what would I do to teach my younger self? So I look back into the mind of like eight year old me and I'm like, how would this affect me as a kid? Or what would kid me react or how would he react in this situation? Honestly, kind of just winged social media, to be honest. It's kind of just... Well, we have had to have you, conversations but. about, you know, who his audience is and making sure that song choices are appropriate as background music. That's true. Um, making sure that all the things that he posts, even if it's not ninja-related, are appropriate for everybody who's watching him because his audience usually is younger than him. So being that positive role model and that positive image. And also, if yeah. you want to get selected for the TV show, you know, they're going to be looking at everything you post, all your social media, which goes for when you're getting a job. You know, we've talked about, you know, people people use that as a tool now to do background information on people. So mm -hmm. you have to always be aware of those posts, regardless of what you're posting for. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting to think of it both as a uh, parent, but when you're talking to your students. Do you often use Tyler as an example of, hey. I do, I do a lot. Um, we've had him come in and be a guest speaker a couple times at school so he could talk to them, but, but really talking about, you know, that role. You know, we do a lot of digital citizenship things in our district and, and it's important for them to understand the things that they put out there now. They don't go away. And so when you're, you know, now looking into a career, you know, as he is, as he's going through college, the things that he posted when he was, you know, 15 are still on that social media. Mm -hmm. So making those choices right now for my students in middle school, they need to understand that those things will still be out there when they're this old. So your parents and your, you have a younger brother as well? Yes. They've been a big support system. Like, um, what would you say about having that kind of support system in this drive for greatness? Like, I'd say it, it's really rewarding, to be honest. Um, I mean, my mom's always been cheerleader number one. She's always been the driving voice to the point where you can hear her on episodes of Ninja Warrior. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You can go back and watch the show. You can hear her voice over everything. It's great. Um, Cooper, my little brother, has always been really supportive, too. He's gone through. It's been cool to watch him grow up because I've been able to kind of, I guess, life coach him a little bit, too and kind of just guide him through stuff. Of course, his experience is different than mine, but he's turning into a really upstarting kid, and I'm really proud of him for that. And then my dad's always just been a really good teacher, a really good coach. I mean, he he's coached me through, like, every sport I've played, and he's done his best to give me input on this one. And, I mean, for a long time I was scared of my dad because he was always very – he had this very angry demeanor to him. But – Eventually, we were able to talk things out, overcome that, and now we just banter all the time. My dad is one of my best friends, and I'm really happy about it. So having a support system like that, just knowing that no matter how I do, I'm going to have a family to fall back on to help me out, um, it's just really helpful. I mean, it's really rewarding. You know you have a good group of people to help you, and it's not just my family. Like, everyone in the ninja community has always been like that, too, and no matter what, there's always someone to fall back on, and it's really, really helpful. I've always been impressed with sports and on the life skills that it gives people. It seems like when people have that focus outside of your everyday life, it really does help you give the focus. It helps you in your everyday life to be able to switch that, like, okay, I'm struggling in school. I've been knocked down in the gym. I can get back up in this area, too. What are your plans for your future? Like, what are you working on right now? Um, well, my current plan is to get a bachelor's in kinesiology. If that falls through, I don't know what will happen major-wise, but something will. Um, and then with Ninja, the plan is just to keep doing it, keep being on the show if, if they keep calling me back. I, my main thing is get a buzzer. I haven't finished a course on the show, and it eats at me so bad. Because it's like, I can do so good everywhere else, and then the show, I just fall through. I don't know if it's pressure or something else, but that's the biggest goal right now, aside from school. Um, 
other than that, really, that's kind of the only two ways my life goes. And Stacy, one of the things that I've always admired about you is just your incredible ability to be a leader. Like your school has had some rough times, <laughs> say the <laughs> least. <a> you <laughs> say the least in the last little while, and it's interesting to see how you've mentored your son, but like you, how you've handled all the things at your school, plus you've been able to um, manage it all. How, how do you do that? <laughs> Please tell me. <laughs> I, can you, can I bring my children over so Certainly. that you can do it for to them too? Of course. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I do, and you know this about me because you did it with me for a while, but one of the biggest things I do for myself is, you know, I give myself permission to have time for me. So for me right now, and for seven years, believe it or not, um, I I do my workouts in the morning, and that gets me in the right headspace to be able to move forward every day. And I, because of what I taught prior to being in administration, I taught some pretty high stress positions in special education. Um, I worked with some of the hardest kids in the district, and I love them every day. But the one thing that they taught me more than anything is every day starts fresh. So regardless of what happened the day before, I have that opportunity to start over, and the students have that opportunity to start over. One thing that I think that I do as a leader, the most important job I have is the people that I hire. And, you know, you're only as good as your team, and my team is amazing. And that's the reason why... I can do my job as well as I can. That's awesome. Now, Tyler, I have one last question for you. So you have a lot of kids that look up to you. Um, What is your advice on how to to set goals and how to follow through? Because that is the thing that's probably the most, one of the hardest things that you have to do in life. It's really easy to set a goal that you're going to be a ninja warrior and that you're going to hit the buzzer. But, like, how do you keep going towards the goal? Because every January I set a goal. (laughs) <laughs> and every February, I think, maybe next year. <laughs> so how do you set your goals and keep going with it? Stay consistent. Just make sure what you're doing is fun because if you're not, if it doesn't interest you anymore, it's not going to be worth it in the long run for you to keep doing it. The other Sorry. thing, uh. when he was younger, um, he had a goal board. So he actually wrote them down, and they were in his room. And he had one side of the board, and his brother had the other. But, I mean, it started with how many pull-ups you did consecutively. Like, yeah, he set small, achievable goals. He had his, his major goal of being on Ninja Warrior, but he set small, achievable goals to get to that so that you can have those stepping stones. I mean, nobody's going to go from zero to Ninja Warrior in one shot, you have to have little stepping stones that you know you're making progress towards that major goal. And so he was able to, you know, he could actually cross them out when he made them and his brother crossed his out and, (laughs) you know, they changed them and they upped their numbers and different things so that the goal got bigger after they made that little stepping stone. So I think that was a big push for you at the beginning. Yeah, because, I mean, it, it can seem scary to set goals. Some goals can be extremely ambitious, super big, big things in your life. Um, if you can, sometimes if you can set those smaller goals and as you accomplish them, it just makes the bigger ones seem a little less scary and it makes it a little easier to like stay on the path to whatever you want to do. That's perfect. Thank you guys so much for joining us and for helping us realize that, you know, big goals are achievable and, and for helping our students know that if you fall, you can get back up. Thanks for listening to this episode of Connect Canyons. Connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at Canyons District, or on our website, canyonsdistrict.org.